Welcome to a code report solution video. In this video, we're going to be covering the solution to problem four from Leak Code Contest 79 entitled Bus Routes. The question states we have a list of bus routes. Each route is a bus route that the ith bus repeats forever. For example, if route 0 is equal to 157, this means that the first bus, 0th indexed, travels in the sequence 157, 157, 1 forever. We start at bus stop S, initially not a bus, and we want to go to bus stop T. Traveling by buses only, what is the least number of buses we must take to reach our destination? Return negative 1 if it is not possible. And note that the number of routes we'll have is going to be less than 500, the number of stops on each route is going to be less than 500, and the stop number uh, can be up to 10 to the 6. And so note that this question is asking what is the least number of buses, not the least number of stops. So this is going to be a breadth first search problem, but it's going to be uh, slightly different than your classic breadth first search. So let's take a look at an example. So here we have our vector of vectors, which represents all of our roots. So each vector is a root, and we have our starting stop 0 and our ending stop 7. So visually, this looks like uh, the following. We've got four different roots. We've color-coded them, blue, red, green, and orange. And we want to get from stop 0 to stop 7. So note that the way the root works is you go uh, from one stop to the next stop. But once you hit the last stop, you can go back to the beginning. So each one of these roots represents represents its own cycle. And the way we're going to solve this is we are going to use a breadth first search that looks at each stop and looks at each route that that stop can go to. Then we're going to loop through all the stops in each of those routes and keep track of the stops we visited. And uh, we are going to increment the number of buses that we've been on uh, during this process. So let's take a look at what that's going to look like. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create an adjacency list. So this will be an unordered map uh, where the key is an integer which represents the stop number and the value is going to be a unordered set of integers. That's what USI stands for, which is going to be just the unique routes that this stop uh, is on. So for stop zero, this exists in both root one and root two, so the red root and the blue root. And so this means that from stop 0, we can either go uh, down root 1 or root 2. For stop 1, it only exists on the blue root, so we only have root 1 here. And, and this is uh, done for all of the stops. So we're going to use that to navigate our graph. And the other two data structures we need are as follows. So we need a queue, which is going to represent our stops that we need to process. So it's just going to be a first in, first out data structure. And then we need an unordered set to keep track of the stops that we've already visited to make sure that we aren't uh, visiting stops that we've already been to. And then there's one other small thing we have to make sure we do in this algorithm to make sure it doesn't time out, uh, but I'll mention that when we get to it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to push into our queue, uh, the stops to visit, our starting stop, which is going to be 0. And so the first value in our pair here is going to be the stop number, and the second value is going to be the number of uh, routes or buses that we've been on at this point. And so we're going to initialize this to 0, and then we're going to start by looking at this, because it's the the only pair in our queue and we're going to see we're at stop zero so we're going to go to our adjacency list and we're going to see what routes uh, do, is stop zero in and we're going to see the blue root and the red root so we're going to go here loop through all the stops in our blue root loop through all the stops in our red root and we are going to append those to our or push those onto our queue and at the same time we're going to push them into our or insert them into our visited unordered set so once we do this, uh, it'll look as follows. And note that we're adding uh, the first to just be the stop number, so 1, 2, 3, 4. And then we're adding the second to be 1 plus what the current number of buses has been. So we initialized it to 0 because at the beginning we're not currently on a route. And then for uh, stop 1 and 2, we can get to those by just going on one stop, the blue bus. And for 3 and 4, we can get them by going on one bus, which is the red, uh, the red route. Um, and so once we've done this, we are going to pop off the zero. But before we do that, we want to make sure that we're not going to be processing uh, these stops multiple times. So because we've added all of the stops in the blue route and the red route to our uh, to visit queue, we can clear these. 
Um, and so if we do that, we're going to make sure that the next time we end up at a stop, like one or two that's already on one of these routes or connected to one of these routes, uh, we're not going to process those again. So we'll pop that off, clear these, and, and note at the same time that we've added all of these stops that we added to our to visit queue to our visited unordered set so that we don't end up processing those processing those as well. So we move to our next stop, which is going to be one. We go up to our adjacency list, check the routes that one is in, stop one is in. It's only in route one, but this is empty, so we're not going to do anything for that. We then move to uh, stop two. We're going to go up to our adjacency list once again, and we check to see what routes it's in. It's in route one and three, so uh, the blue route's empty, but the green route does have stops left in it. So we're going to loop through all of these. For the ones that aren't in our visited unordered set, we're going to push those onto our two visit queue. So that's going to be five and six. And so we push those onto our queue and we also insert them into our visited unordered set. And at this point, we can also clear route three because we just added all the stops in that. So clear route three, then move to our next node. So pop off uh, this pair. And then we're looking at stop three. Stop three is in the red route, which has already been cleared. So we won't do anything. We move to stop four. Stop four is in both the red route and the orange route. So we can then again add any of these stops that aren't in our visited unordered set. For this, it's only going to be stop seven. So we're going to insert that into our visit visited and push it onto our two visit queue. And at this point, we are going to clear our last route. Uh, and so now our routes are completely empty and all we're basically doing is just popping off and looking at each of the pairs in this queue until we find our destination uh, stop. And note that while we were adding these on, uh, we always just add plus one to the previous number of buses. And the reason that works is because when we look at a bus, we add all of the stops and all of those stops are going to have the same number. So the next time we get to a stop and a uh, next iteration of our graph exploration uh, we know that if we're adding another stop it has to be a new bus because we already cleared out everything for that same bus and that's why that works so right now we're looking at stop four we then go to stop five that's not what we're looking for we then go to stop six that's not what we're looking for and then we finally get to stop seven and at this point this is our target stop so we're just going to take the second uh, of our pair at this point and return it and that will be our answer so uh, that's our algorithm, and let's take a look at the code uh, for this. So here we have our function num buses to destination, which takes three parameters, a vector a vector of integers, which represents all of the routes, and two integers s and t, our starting stop and our ending stop. And at the top here, we're declaring our unordered map of integers for the keys and unordered set of integers for the values. So this is our adjacency list. Uh, the first two lines after that are going to be filling our adjacency list. Uh, so it's pretty straightforward. We're just looking at uh, for each of the stops in each one of our uh, vectors here, uh, what are the routes that it can connect to. So we're adding uh, the outer loop index to our inner loop uh, stop number. Uh, once we've done that, we declare our queue of pairs, which is going to be the stops and also keeping track of the number of buses uh, that we visited at that point. We are going to push on to it the starting stop and initializing the number of buses to zero. And then our last data structure that we need is the unordered set of integers to keep track of the stops that we've already visited. So we're going to initialize that just to be the number of our starting stop. And then we have our while loop, which is just going to be uh, continuing until uh, either to visit is uh, has been empty, meaning we will uh, reach the end of all our nodes, or until we reach uh, our target stop. So if we end up not reaching our star target stop, the question asks us to turn negative one. That means we can't actually get to our destination because the routes uh, are not linked up. And so inside our while loop, we're just extracting the stop number from our first and the number of buses is from our second we check is the stop equal to our target stop if it is just return the number of buses at that point if not pop off this pair from our uh, to visit queue and then we've got our nested for loops that's saying for each route that this stop can get to and each of the stops on that route if we already haven't been to that stop insert it and when we insert this into our uh, stops visited, basically if it is uh, not existing there it's going to insert and the 
uh, second that we're reading from on the second line is going to return true. So that's saying that we haven't visited this stop yet. Uh, and if, if we have visited, this will return false, and then we won't end up pushing uh, the current stop, the next stop, onto our queue. So if this insertion, uh, the second returns true, we'll also end up pushing on uh, the next stop plus the number of buses plus one in order uh, to keep track of those uh, that number. And so once uh, we've completed this inner for loop, we want to make sure that we are clearing uh, the current route that we have just uh, pushed on to our queue and inserted into our in unordered set. And note that if you don't have this, you're actually uh, going to exceed the time limit on the problem. So this is an important line in order for this algorithm to work. And then once you finish this, you'll do that for each route, and then you'll continue to finish this while loop either until you hit this return condition or you've emptied your queue, at which point you'll return negative one. And this is the, the whole algorithm. So the last thing to talk about is time complexity. Uh, for this problem, it's going to be linear in uh, the total number of, uh, the total length of your vector of vectors, uh, because you're gonna need to do uh, an insertion for each one of the values in your vector of vectors, and there's gonna be duplicates. So down here, you're only visiting every node once, but you've got duplicates of some of your stops up here. So it's gonna be uh, linear in the total length of your vector of vectors. As always, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Make sure to follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start. You can find all of the code that I use in my videos on my GitHub page. All of the links are in the description down below. And finally, if you want to make sure you don't miss any of my upcoming videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.